Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. We are on the test server right now and we have some info about the Hydra Clash. What is the Hydra Clash? Well, it's an upcoming clan versus clan activity that should be from the sounds of it running every single week where you are up against, well, four other clans, right? So five of you in a group together and the top three clans in that group in terms of who did the most Hydra damage between those clans, so everyone in the clan working together can earn chests, which will contain, uh, you can see right here, one to nine. What's going on? One to nine protection, huh? Uh, it will contain accessories for both protection and stone skin gear. Very exciting stuff. So with protection in particular, you can see that the chance for protect a buff is now stronger. If you get a full nine piece set on a champion, it's going to be difficult to do, but incredibly powerful. Number one, you're getting tons of speed, resistance, and a bit of HP from this. But at nine pieces, you have a 75% chance to put protected buffs. So they're nearly always going to be protected. And allies will do 5% more damage for each buff placed by the wearer. That's incredibly strong. We have champions like Duchess. We've got champions like Sifi that put out three buffs on a team. That's 15% more damage for your whole team from that. Uh, champions like Mithrala can put out four buffs and so on. So that's 20% more damage with all of Mithrala's buffs going. Very powerful set, very strong. A lot of people are going to want this one. Stone Skin is also going to have a nine piece set. Now, this is interesting. You're going to get more HP resistance, and uh, the Stone Skin Shield is going to be more powerful. So, by default, the Stone Skin Shield is 50% HP. This will knock it up to 75% HP. Uh, there is actually a purpose to this, which we didn't know about before. But if you watch my video yesterday on what's he called? I've forgotten his name. Pyro, Pyro Lizard Man, Sulfurion, that's the one. This lizard, we actually tested him out um, with HP Burn Explosion in Arena. With HP Burn Explosion like this, you can do 60% max HP to Stone Skin in the first round of Arena. So with the default Stone Skin Shield, which is 50% max HP, you can actually just delete stone skin in one move if you explode HP burn on four enemies. Normally it's 3% damage. Uh, stone skin takes five times damage though from HP burn. So each HP burn explosion is 15% damage to a stone skin shield. That does mean that without a blessing, right? Now with, with incinerate, it's not gonna matter. You're gonna absolutely blitz it anyway. But interestingly enough, without incinerate, stone skin shields will actually survive at nine piece. Is that worth it? Probably not, but it's interesting. I think the more exciting part about this is because you can now get stone skin accessories. Well, look, we all know how good reaction accessories are to help you survive the first turn in combat. Well, guess what? Stone skin accessories mostly are going to be better. So if you get, you know, two stone skin accessories, you could take a nuker, build them in four pieces of savage, two pieces of stone skin and then two stone skin accessories and get them savage and one turn of stone skin as well which is very powerful so there's a big reason to do this hydra clash now what info do we have on this i'm sort of recap we've already known that stuff i wanted to recap though to show you how important and why this is going to be so important so the first hydra clash is going to happen on the 9th of august that's just over one week from today so not not tomorrow, Wednesday, but Wednesday the next week. What this means is that everyone, you are safe to do your Hydra Keys tomorrow if you want. That's totally fine. The Hydra Clash is not going to begin until the following Wednesday after the next reset. Also, only the top 3,000 clans in the game are going to take part. So you come in. Obviously, we're on the test server here, so it's a bit wonky, right? Cult of Cow, the number three clan. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can see and check your ranking, perhaps. But only the top 3,000 clans are going to be involved in the first Hydra Clash. The week after that, it's going to be open to everyone. So, uh, yeah, the first one in top three, th uh, top 3,000 will be on the 9th. I guess then it would be, what, the 16th for everyone else. So probably most of you watching, it's going to be the 16th of August when this stuff opens up. So you're going to have a little bit of time. I also think the interesting thing about this is 16th of August, we should have most likely a personal reward CVC right before that. 
So if you have not spent your legendary tomes already, I'm on the test server. I've got one and a half thousand. Can I have those on the real game, please? That'd be nice. Um, but I would save those for that personal reward CVC so that you can be like, oh, cool. These are the strategies for Hydra Clash I want to use. I've got my tome saved up. I can book up those champions and be really well set for that first Hydra Clash that's open to everyone. Uh, so I recommend that. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, they didn't actually confirm. Now, let me double check. They did not actually confirm that it will be live. They said, when? We'll see. They just said, afterwards, we will see. I would anticipate it would be the week after, but perhaps not. I still think. The point still stands, save your tomes until that personal reward CVC. See what the best strategies are from that first week of Hydro Clash testing from the top clans. I'll be do doing videos on it as well. I've got a little hint for you here today as well. Um, and uh, yeah, all that stuff is going to be pretty good. Also, general info here, straight from Plarium. Each Hydro Clash will last seven days, starting, starting at 14 UTC on Wednesday. That's interesting. So it actually... That uh, ends at 8 a.m. UTC the following Wednesday. So there is a gap, right? There is a gap where you may not know this, but Hydra keys actually reset. The timer is different for each clan. They don't all reset at the same time, I guess, to not overload the server. So I guess that's what's going on there. But what that means, I think, is it's going to be important on Wednesday reset. If your clan resets early, you can't get it into the previous Hydra Clash, right? Just wait for the next Hydra Clash to start before going. So that's something to watch out for. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, damage dealt to Hydra between 8 a.m. UTC and 2 p.m. UTC will not be counted towards Hydra Clash. So don't do it. Don't do it in that little gap. That's kind of important. That's the one to catch you out. Um, so yeah, we also know, I have given them feedback on this, guys, that you get... Your normal damage from normal counts. Hard, it's going to be double damage. This team, by the way, won't work because this dude's been changed, right? This champion's been changed, but still ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Um, brutal will be three times your damage as points. Nightmare will be four times your damage as points. What does this mean? I actually think this means that Nightmare is really pretty bad for most people. Um, and actually hard... And normal, as it stands, are probably the best spots to go. Let me put it to you like this, right? Let's say Brutal, you're getting three times points. Nightmare, you're getting four times points. You might only get half the score on Nightmare that you get on Brutal. You know, Nightmare is probably twice as hard as Brutal. Like, it really adds up quick. But you're not getting twice the points. You're going, if you were, you'd be going from three times multiplier to a six times. But no, you're going from three times to a four times. I think the multiplier is not strong enough. Hard and normal are actually very easy for later game players, and you can cheese these as well. You don't need enemy max HP nukers. You can use regular nukers. Let me tell you who the best champion is going to be for the Hydra Clash if it goes live like this. I know you might be thinking Acrisia is the best, but no, that is not the case. The best champion, I don't have her either, is going to be Trunda. Trunda is the champion to have. The reason is this A2. Absolutely insane move, right? Attack one enemies, then attack all other enemies with the second hit, doing 60% damage inflicted from the first hit. What actually happens is it, it does that first hit, it does take 60% of the damage, but then I believe it will multiply that 60%, I think, by the damage from the books. It will multiply it again by however much crit damage you've built on her, presuming it crits, which it should. Um, I think it multiplies it by masteries and against Hydra, I think it double dips and multiplies it by decapitated heads value again. So you can hit a decapitated head with her A2 and it will literally blow up and one shot every other head in the game on normal, on hard. It can even kind of do that on brutal to an extent. Falls off more difficult on nightmare because they have got more stats. But yeah, this is an absolute massive deal. Anyone who has Trunda is going to, it's really going to be a, a battle of the Trundas. Who has probably four Trundas, maybe even six Trundas to run like double Trunda on normal, hard, or brutal? Or you could want, you could do it with like one Trunda and a couple of reset champs, Gurptuk. The typical team for that, by the way, be like Arbiter, Lydia, Gurptuk, double reset, Trunda, or drop the Gurptuk, bring in a second Trunda. They're the ones I've seen that are really strong. So, yeah, I haven't done much on Trunda on this channel because I don't have a Trunda, but she is going to be insane. So watch out for that. 
<laughs> they'll probably just run a bloody 10x trend there, won't they? That's what they'll do. They'll be like, should we fix this? Should we do something? Should we up the, like, They've never nerfed Trenda. There were calls for it a couple of years ago. I, think, I remember Hell Hades was calling for it to be nerfed. I think before I was a content creator and people went absolutely insane at him. They were so pissed off. Uh, I remember at the time thinking like, man, I thought Hell Hades was right. Like the, she's clearly broken, uh, but they've never fixed her. And I don't know. I don't know if I want them to fix her. Um, I'd rather see probably Brutal and Nightmare count for more. I know then it's one of those things, right? If they make Brutal and Nightmare count for loads, it's really all about Acrisia. If they make Normal Hard count for more, it's really all about Trunda. It's very silly no matter which way you go. But uh, I'll be back with more strategies for you. I was asked, oh, let me show you this. Uh, I have been doing a little bit of testing. So someone asked me to do like a sort of all epic team or with accessible legendaries i was trying this is sort of the best i've got so far the way it went wrong was that uh ugo is the wrong affinity for head of wrath i think he got increased attack and he eventually killed whisper who is our main damage dealer but i was able to do 60.46 million damage so far and just my testing today preparing for hydra clash on the test server um i i'm hopeful to be able to push this up and maybe actually hit 100 million uh perhaps with some tweaks. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do, but to give you an idea, this is an example of the team I was running. So Mithrala uh, giving you the AoE Hex and the shielding protection, Ugo decreased defense block buffs. We've got Aboro mischief tanking, Shamael as a damage, Whisper as damage, and Golden Reaper giving us increased speed and AoE decrease attack. So there's an idea for a team uh, I'll give you a proper video on this when I've min-maxed it more, but just to give you a sneak peek of some of the stuff that you can potentially do. And this is, of course, on the test server without any of the area bonuses either, right? Area bonuses do not exist on the test server, uh, which gives you a whole bunch of extra stats, which would be very powerful, right? The extra attack, the ignore a uh, defense, the extra... Yeah, all that stuff is going to add up. I'm actually thinking maybe with this team swapping Whisper just into the lead, um, and just trying to get even more turns out of her with Shemail might be the way to go. I'm not 100% sure what to do, but yeah, just the worry is that Whisper could die. We don't have a revive, so it's kind of tricky getting speed and revives and stuff in with just epics, but hey, look, we'll come up with some ideas. I can definitely give you a team that will hit over 100 million easily on hard using legendaries, um, but will it compete with a Trunda team? No, <laughs> there's nothing that could compete with a trended team on normal and hard. No way. On brutal, you've maybe a little bit of a chance, but um, there's no way. So look, there you go, guys. That is the news about the Hydra Clash. Uh, like I said, I already fed back that I, I think the multipliers are too low and it's going to be trend wars on normal hard. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. They might update it by the time it goes live for everybody. We'll see. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.